Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of True Crime Tuesday. Um, we're going to continue Black Widow's Month and today I'm going to tell you the story of a very nasty, very wicked woman um, by the name of Stacy Castor. But before we get into the story, I'd like to welcome everyone to my channel. Um, I like to focus on over 50 um, affordable beauty here on my channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that before you leave. And click that notification bell to be notified every time I upload one of these True Crime Tuesdays or any of my other videos. Um, and if you do enjoy today's episode, then please give it a thumbs up. It, it, it helps me tremendously. So, without further hesitation, let's jump into this. All right, today's story is about a lady named Stacy Castor, who was born Stacy Ruth Daniels, on June 24th, 1967, in Weedsport, Weedsport, New York, to Jerry Daniels and um, Judy Eaton. Now, in 1985, she met a man named Michael Wallace. And by all accounts, they got very close, very fast, and married, and had two daughters, Bree, who was the youngest, and Ashley, who was the oldest. Now, it's said that Mr. Wallace um, was very, very close to Bree, who was the youngest. She was a bit of a daddy's girl, which made Stacy feel a little sorry for Ashley, the older one. And so, subsequently, she became her, like, BFF because she felt so bad that the, da the dad showed favoritism that she got really, really close to Ashley. And the reason that that is significant will come up later in this story. So, Mr. Wallace worked as a nighttime mechanic and Mrs. Wallace was a ambulance dispatcher. And it is said that they did not make a tremendous amount of money and that therefore ended up causing them some marital issues that despite how close both of them were to the girls that they just, they really couldn't get along. And um, so they did have trouble in the marriage. Um, all right, in 1999, Mr. Wallace began um, feeling poorly off and on, um, just kind of intermittently. And no one really knew what was wrong with him, but it is said that all of his loved ones were begging him to go to the um, go to the doctor. And one day, while Mrs. Wallace was at work, and Ashley, the oldest daughter, who was 11 at the time, was home alone with her dad that she noticed that the dad was not looking too, too good and that she um, thought maybe that there was something wrong, but she did not do anything about it. And Mr. Wallace passed away at home. Now, the doctors determined that he died of a heart attack 
Now, Mr. Wallace had a sister who was not convinced that he had a heart attack, but Stacy was convinced and told the sister that she was going to accept the doctor's recommendation that it was a heart attack and even though the sister was requesting further investigation of an autopsy and a more thorough investigation, um, Stacy said no. So, four years pass, and in the year, in 2003, Stacy met and married a man by the name of David Castor. Now, Mr. Castor owned his own, okay, I gotta give this a few minutes to dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyelashes, I mean my eyebrows. Um, Mr. Castor owned his own heating and air conditioning business, and Mrs. Castor became the office manager and it was said that she felt very fortunate that Mr. Castor um, took she and her daughters in because a lot of men do not like to raise other men's children. But Mr. Castor, who had formerly been married and had a son of his own, he fell in love with Stacy and therefore fell in love with her children and they got married and it is said that they had a very nice, very comfortable relationship with each other. Okay, I'm sorry y'all, I can't find anything today. I'm just having a terrible time. Um, all right, so in August of 2005, Stacy calls 911 and said that her husband had locked himself in their marital bedroom, citing depression, like a really deep depression. He would not come out, nor would he let anyone in. Now, I, I just assume that she left him alone because it said the next day when she showed up for work is when she is when she called 911 so it's like he locked himself in the bedroom and when he didn't show up for work the next day that's when she called 911 i'm not really sure why someone would wait for that but anyway that is that's the best that i can tell um is that he just didn't come into work the next day. So, she called the police, and the police showed up, and they break the door down. They go into the bedroom, and Mr. Castor is laying dead. There is a glass beside the bed of a green substance, a green liquid, which is later determined to be antifreeze, which is also known as ethylene glycol. Now, ethylene glycol poisoning is a rough way to go. It is a very, very rough way to go. And not exactly what someone would choose to do to commit suicide. But Mrs. Castor said that he had been depressed and that it had to be suicide. I'm sorry, y'all, I am so hot. I had to go off camera for a few minutes. And it didn't help. I am still just absolute, absolutely about to burst into flames. 
excuse me. And it's the sun's not even shining or anything. I'm inside. But this is, honey, this is fibromyalgia. This is exactly what happens when you are flaring. Okay, so the coroner did determine that Mr. Castor died from ethylene glycol poisoning and that the manner of death was suicide. David Castor's son and former wife were very, very upset by this and said there is no way, no way that he killed himself. There was no way that he would have left his son fatherless that there just wasn't any way, and that he had become particularly close to Bree and Ashley, and that there was no indication whatsoever that this man was comp contemplating suicide. So, detectives start doing their research, and they've ordered wiretaps of the caster's phone, of Stacy Caster's conversations. And at this particular time, Ashley has started college. As a matter of fact, by all crazy coincidences, it's her first day of college and detectives show up at her school and begin to ask her questions. Now, some of the things that they proceed to ask her are involving her father's death and the death of Mr. Castor, suggesting that neither one of these men died of natural causes or of suicide and what did she know about that? And of course, she's freaking out. She's going, uh, whoa, I don't know anything about this. Um, this is crazy. So the detectives leave and she calls her mom and her mom says, why don't you come here so that we can talk about this? And so uh, Ashley goes to the family home where Stacy suggests to her 17, 18 year old daughter that maybe they should have some drinks and talk it all out. So they do just that. Well, Stacy is of course uh, trying to get every bit of information she can get out of Ashley. What did the detectives say? Um, who do they think is involved? What's going on? Ashley tells her what she knows and goes on about her business. Back to school the next day. Mother calls Ashley. I think we need to talk and have a drink again. Now, all right, think about it, y'all. You're 17, 18 years old. You just start college, and your mother is telling you to come home so that y'all can talk and have some drinks together. I mean, come on. What 18-year-old girl, boy, or otherwise would not be intrigued with the notion of going home and having drinks with their mother? All right, so the second time they start having these drinks together... Ashley notices that her drink tastes terrible. Well, the mom says, um, you know, well, I used a different kind of, of, of vodka or whatever. I'm sure it's just fine. Just go ahead. And if you drink it with a straw, you won't taste it as much and you can drink it really fast. I mean, the mother comes up with all kinds of ways that Ashley can drink these drinks and not taste this yucky taste that she was complaining about. 
So Ashley uses the straw, starts drinking, and the next thing you know, she wakes up in the hospital. Now, when Ashley wakes up, there are detectives in her room that are proceeding to tell her that she has attempted suicide. She has left a suicide note and she killed her father and her stepfather. Um, the only person that is allowed to visit with Ashley is her sister, Brie. She is ass freaking out saying, Brie, what on earth happened? Why do they think I killed David? Why do they think that I killed dad? What is going on? Well, Brie tells her that she found her unconscious screams for her mother. Her mother calls 911, finds a suicide note by Ashley's bed, which was not there when Bree found her, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So it is a typewritten suicide note that she could not live with herself because she was responsible for the death of her father and she was responsible for the death of her stepfather, David Castor, that she poisoned him with ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. Now, the interesting thing is the police have done an investigation there at the house. Okay? The investigation shows no fingerprints on the glass that was sitting on the nightstand containing the antifreeze. There was a turkey baster found in the trash can Mr. Castor's fingerprints were not on the turkey baster, nor were Ashley's. The only fingerprints found on the turkey baster were that of Stacy Castor herself. Okay. Um, here is something that I find crazy. Um, Stacy Castor had her second husband, David, buried right next to her first husband, Michael Wallace. Um, I don't know why I find that super strange, but anyway, that happened. And when the police were doing the wiretapping, they were also trying to, they wiretapped there at the graveside hoping that Mrs. Castor would say something as she is visiting the graveside, but she doesn't, she doesn't give anything away. And eventually they go ahead and have Mr. Wallace's body exhumed where they find that he did not have a heart attack, but he also died of ethylene glycol poisoning. Suspicious? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So, what the police surmise by um, everything that's happened so far is that the minute Stacy Castor found out that the police were suspicious that David Castor had not committed suicide, and that Mike Wallace had not, in fact, had a heart attack, 
she panicked. And in her panic, she decided that the answer would be to set up her daughter to take the fall for both of them. I'll be right back. All right. On February 5th of 2009, Stacy Castor was found guilty of the murder of David Castor. And y'all, this is what I find so sad about the whole thing. So she took these girls' father away from them, right? Killed him. Then she killed their stepdad. When she realized that the police were closing in, she tried to kill her own daughter. They found all kinds of painkillers and sleeping pills in Ashley's system. And they found several different drafts of this typewritten suicide note. And they, you know, you got to watch technology these days because the detectives were able to determine that Stacy Castor was the only one home at the time that this suicide note was typed up, and it was typed up long before Ashley ever went to her room. Hmm. This is a this is not exactly a typical look for me, but anyway, I just thought I'd give it a try. Um, but y'all, Ashley got you know on the stand, and her main her main point was why why did she kill the dad why did she kill david castor and why would she attempt to kill her own child i mean your mother is supposed to be the person who protects you and she was setting her up i mean not only did she take the chance that ashley would die from all the pills that she put in that yucky tasting drink. So not only did she do that and took a chance that Ashley might die, but she also set her up for these two murders that she herself committed. And then on top of that, Stacy's mother, who were was grandmother to Bree and Ashley, she defended Stacy and blamed it all on Ashley. And I don't know why. I just kind of thought that was, um, I don't know. I mean, I know that nobody wants to believe that their child is capable of something like that. But why would you believe your child incapable but believe your grandchild capable? Don't know. But I want to read, um, I want to read what Ashley said this is what Ashley said when before the sentencing because um, Stacy was sentenced to 55 and a half years to life. But this is what she said. I never knew what hate was until now. Even though I do hate her, I still love her at the same time. That bothers me. It is so confusing. How can you hate someone and love them at the same time? I just wish that she would say... She's sorry for everything she did, including all the lies. As horrible as it makes me feel, this is goodbye, Mom. As hard as you tried, I survived and will survive because I'm surrounded by people that love me. I'm going to do good things in this world despite making me in every sense of, despite you in every sense of the word making me an orphan. And another thing, y'all, that I thought was really ironic is the prosecutor, um, he and Ashley became extremely close, and he is like a father figure to her, which I think is wonderful. Um, and then the last twist to this story 
is that Stacy Castor was found dead in her cell on the morning of June 11th, 2016. There was no foul play. They said that the likely cause of death was a heart attack. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, she had this. She got the easy way out. A heart attack is easy compared to what she put those two men through because ethylene glycol poisoning is a horrible way to die. So... Anyway, there's the saga of, of Stacy Castor. Um, if you ever get an opportunity to watch anything on this case, you really should do it because I couldn't do this story justice hearing Ashley talk about what her mother did and watching her... I'm not saying it's, it's good entertainment to watch her devastation... I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I couldn't do this story judge justice because Ashley's emotions are what have such an impact on this case. And her sister Bree supported her 100%, um, which I thought was beautiful um, that the sisters stuck together. So anyway, there is the story of Stacy Castor. Um, I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you on Thursday with another little mini haul, and then I think I'm going to do a look with some of the things that I got in the next haul. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Bye.